<laughs> I am still clearing out my kids Halloween candy and I have got a whole pile of almond joys that I'm gonna be eating throughout this video don't worry I'm gonna edit it all out but in case you see me the coconut Here we are guys, we've made it. The final video for Black Knight hardtop installation and I'm releasing this video on Black Friday. How's that? Black Friday, Black Knight conclusion. Not only am I wrapping up Black Knight hardtop installation in this video, I will also give you a sneak teaser peek at the next project that Jason and I will be working on soon. That teaser will be at the end of this video, so if you want to see that, then stick around till the end. If you are new to this channel, I pretty much talk and do anything pinball, so if that sounds interesting to you, then hit that uh, subscribe button down there. So where we left off last time was that we just put down the hardtop for the upper playfield deck, so now the hardtop is actually officially completely installed on the lower playfield as well as the upper playfield. Now comes the part where we put everything back onto the machine and see how it plays. But it's not as simple as just throwing everything back on the machine guys. As you saw in our previous video, we had to do some alterations to the ramp entry points to make it a nice smooth transition, probably the smoothest transition of any Black Knight that I've seen or played. So a majority of this video is going to just show you us putting it back together, but there will be snippet points that you need to pay attention to so that way whenever you do your hardtop that you may want to fix these issues as well. So to start off, the first thing that we need to do is ease the transition from the lower play field upon shooting your ball down the shooter lane to when the ball launches up to the upper play field portion. And by just snapping on it without putting in these shims in place, it's not going to be basically the same as it should be. We are doing so by adding shims to the lower play field and once again to the upper play field portion right here. That increases the height of what it was to the height of the hardtop, making it a nice, even transition, essentially like we never installed a hardtop. Once we figured out where we wanted to put the ramps in our previous video, attaching the upper portion of the ramps to the upper play field was a lot more smoother and easier to do. All we essentially did was line up the ramps to the artwork and make new screw holes and screw it down in place right there. Very smooth transition. That's right guys, we are switching over to yellow rubbers. I brought over some Titan yellow rubbers just because in my head I was wondering about how it was going to look with the color scheme of this machine. Turns out it looked really good and so we put in another order to Titan. Eric hooked us up and we got a whole yellow kit for this machine and we've got it installed. And you judge for yourself but I think yellow goes very well with this game. Here comes the big point that needs to be made on this upper play field for your Black Knight hardtop. And I want to say that the owner of the hardtops will be making this adjustment in future hardtops, so it may be fixed depending on when you have purchased your hardtop or not. So this is something that you need to verify before laying it down. <laughs> Although we wish we would have seen this before we laid it down just to make it a little bit easier on us We were able to fix this issue uh, With a little bit of luck, you know, we're missing some screw holes right so here. Makes sense on the damn post house though. Missing No screw holes there What we did was reassemble the plastic portion right here that's supposed to screw down, put it all in place, and set it there where it needed to go and just drilled straight down to where the screw should be in our opinion. And it just sort of turns out that we were able to land exactly where the original screw holes were at. So we lucked out on that. It was a one of those yes, yes, yes. So make sure that these two screw holes are there when applying your hardtop. 
and here is that shot with the screw holes in place they're essentially like maybe one inch directly behind those posts right there behind the drop targets maybe not even an inch i mean i'm just using throwing throwing metrics out there that may not even be completely correct at all and now it's time to lower this play field in its final resting position. But before Jason goes over some of the things that we had to do to make the adjustments for the hardtop, here is some footage of what the machine looks like in its entirety. So after you lower your plate build into your machine, now comes the part to where you need to test every switch. Every rollover, everything. You need to make sure that everything still works 100% by using the ball. Don't use your finger to roll over your rollovers because that's going to be not the same thing as the ball rolling over it. Your skin can fit in between the crevices of those switch sockets or cracks or switch areas. You know what I'm talking about. But your skin can go deeper than a ball can, essentially. So use the ball to test every switch. If the ball can roll over a switch and it doesn't activate, you're going to have to make a micro adjustment on that switch to increase its height so that way that the ball can actually activate that switch. And when you do your switch adjustments, you will be doing these adjustments with the power off. Do not do this with the power off. On. Chances are if you're down there with a flathead screwdriver and you're altering your switches and messing around You're gonna short something out and on this machine You're probably gonna knock out both of the ICs for your switch matrix if not both at least one So that's gonna be a little tedious is to go through your entire game to make sure every switch works Appropriately throw the ball into every out hole to make sure that it ejects appropriately We had issues with our shooter lane whenever the ball ejects into the shooter lane We had to make adjustments on that uh, uh, the adjustments, I'm going to let Jason talk you through those, what we had to do. But it, it was a pretty easy thing, just the exacto knife, and to cut off some a little extra of the hard top to make sure it was an easy eject back onto the play field. And the only thing you had to adjust up here was just add that clear washer yeah, we underneath had, it. Yeah, we had to add, add the clear washer underneath of it in order for it to eject the ball. Um, every out kick, though, we had to trim with the exacto. I think you got some footage of it. Mm -hmm earlier so there's about a 45 degree cut on that out hole there's a 45 degree roughly cut angle on that out hole so did we had to do any cutting on that out here yeah we did have to do a cutting on there because it didn't want to check the ball out to the shooter line so we we trimmed that it was actually you could see it overhanging just a little bit from where the edge of the wood was so we used an exacto and we trimmed that we trimmed it at an angle though we didn't trim it straight up and down yeah so angle it give it that 45 degree it angle, 45 degree angle to so the only major mod like out. modifications was these two screw holes that were missing yeah in the back of the clear plastic on the back side of this of yeah this one, right around here Some other micro adjustments that will need to be made depending on how you put your machine together is whenever you take your left ramp and it goes to the upper play field and rolls down to your upper left flipper, that needs to be a very smooth transition. If it comes over and it does a bounce, it shouldn't bounce. So you're gonna have to adjust your post accordingly to make sure it's a smooth transition. I have video right here showing you what it should look like. And that's it guys. 
That's the Black Knight with a hardtop installation. Now there's pros and cons to hardtops, but I'm telling you from our experience so far, the pros outweigh the cons. One of the cons that we had to point out on this particular machine is the play field, the hardtop in general, is much more slippery and it's, it's it, it basically is a very smooth and slick. So whenever you use your magna save, the ball never comes to a complete stop. It's always just wobbling around and even with the magna save, sometimes it's wobbling around so much that it'll still throw it to the outlane. We're thinking that we're probably going to do some adjustments to the magna save on there, increase the current so that way it gives a little more oomph to that magnet. That's still all up in the air at this point. But Jason really enjoys this hardtop. He is so glad that he has done this. He said his Black Knights never played and looked this good. <laughs> oh, when it hits that ramp, that momentum just like builds up. Oh yeah, it's smooth. You've got to admit, even though it's not a complete full cabinet and everything restoration, this has got to be one of the best looking Black Knights that you have ever seen. We've got all new CPR plastics on this, and we have one plastic piece that was missing from our kit from CPR, but it is in the mail and it's on its way. You may or may not see it in the video. If you see a plastic missing, that's the plastic that's in the mail. Got rid of the crummy wooden plastic looking acorns on top of all the plastics for all the posts and replaced those with chrome caps to add a little extra shininess to this game because it needed more obviously. Almost every portion of this play field shines and reflects. It's beautiful. Now Hardtops has already announced that they have so many more games in the line that should be released within the next 12 to 14 months. One of those games is my Swords of Fury. And I cannot wait for that. Once they release the Swords of Fury, I'm telling you, you will see another series of me doing a complete restore on this. Not just Playfield, I plan to do a complete clear coat, restore cabinet and everything on my Swords of Fury. And I cannot wait to see what it looks like with a shiny, beautiful hardtop. So that's going to wrap up this Black Knight hardtop installation series, guys. Stick around to the very end for that one little teaser to give you an idea of what we're doing next. If you like what you've seen here, please give me that thumbs up down there. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to click the little bell icon. That way you can be notified of whenever I upload new material for your viewing pleasure. Until next time, peace out. Oh yeah, Black Knight looks damn sexy. Too bad your centaur looks like total shit though. Whoa. The only question is man, when are we going to do it?